recognize the gentleman from California, Representative LaMalfa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Mr. Secretary, welcome to our committee lair. Um, glad to have you here today. So we've covered a lot of interesting topics so far. Um, High-speed rail in California, that's always a fun one for me since I've uh, watched that uh, uh, evolve for a long time as a Californian and still the fact remains that the price of the thing has quadrupled from what the taxpayers were originally sold when they approved about $10 billion worth of bonds and the ARA Act in about 2009 supplemented with about three and a half billion more when all the other states threw theirs back in the pot and California got it all. We've only been able to supplement that with some uh, uh, CO2 auctions at the state level. So we're going to be probably 70, 80, 90 billion dollars short to complete that project. So however much begging they come with hat in hand to this, this uh, Congress here, this uh, to DC, that, that's what they're going to be ultimately asking for because it'll never pay for itself. So it's time to move on to something else. Uh, I was found it interesting here earlier on the price of electric vehicles that an F-150 is 50,000 now because it's about 10,000 higher it should be because of supply chain and a COVID shutdown that was much longer than it should have been. So you can see an F-150 at 50 grand, but you can see the lightning version up to all electric is about 70 to 80 grand. I can, you can look that right up. So EV vehicles are going to be much costlier than the same equivalent, same size of a uh, internal combustion vehicles. So that's a reality that consumers are going to face as they get pushed out of having the choices. That's what Mr. Perry was saying. Ford is losing their rear end on these things right now, and that's going to have to affect the price of everything else as well as the jobs. So the, the thing that it comes down to is that we're going to have to make them here, we're going to let China make them. Well, even China making them is something that people aren't asking for unless they have a free choice. So what I want to get at Mr. Secretary, first, why are we doing all this? Is it high-speed rail? Is it because we're chasing a, a few tons of CO2? All these electric vehicles, is it because we're chasing CO2? Is that really the whole deal? Here's the way I look at it. The EV revolution is happening with or without us. Exercising their free choice, Americans have tripled the proportion of cars that they are purchasing electric already, and we're still at the very outset of this revolution. You add to the fact that the cost of producing the cars will come down, and that if you've ever driven one, you probably know that it has superior performance, lower maintenance costs, lower costs of, of, uh, of fueling it. Not in my uh, rural and district, sir, because parts. I have to drive many, many miles, and I can't, people don't want to come to my district so much because they can't count on being able to charge their vehicle if they want to go way up to Modoc County or something. So Yeah, for sure. If, if, you're, if you're driving uh, more than a couple hundred miles a day, uh, then you really depend on that charging infrastructure, some of which isn't there. On the other hand, the vast majority of Americans uh, will do what Chastin and I do, which is we, uh, we got a uh, hybrid plug-in minivan. We just charge it in the garage, and it, it does what we need uh, for most purposes. But, but anyway, the point is to, to get to that very important question you asked. Why, if, if EVs are coming anyway, why have a policy intervention? No, why spend forced. taxpayer money? They're the answer is forced. this. They're being forced by government. No, nobody's being forced. The CEOs of these corporations don't have a spine. They're all falling in line. I don't know if you sat down with these CEOs, but uh, I, I would say they're, they're pretty tough and smart. No, they're scared of Washington, D.C. You know, years ago when the mandate was to have 54 and a half mile per gallon average, oh, we can do that by the year 20, was it 22 or whatever. No way in hell they can hit tw that before all this electric stuff started happening. It was 25, I think. Do you know what a 54 and a half mile per gallon uh, internal combustion vehicle looks like? It's about this big. Okay, so yeah, nobody you know, wants those. Nobody wants these electric vehicles unless you're an elite that can afford them. People in my district sure as hell don't want them. So keep going. Why are we doing this? Is it over CO2? Yeah, we're doing it for three reasons. Even though the EV revolution is going to happen anyway. Oh, I think it's that's a revolution like, caused I, I would love to be able to answer your question, Congressman. Yeah, okay. Even though we think that transition is happening in the automotive sector no matter what, there are three things that we think are not guaranteed. Will it happen quickly enough to materially help with climate change? Will it happen on equitable terms that are available to people who aren't wealthy and okay, might not be able to? short on time. So if I could just please finish my answer. Let's drill on the climate change. Just finish the third. third. Uh, Will it be made on, on American soil It's about CO2, not? isn't it? How's what that? Percent, what percent of the atmosphere is CO2 that we're chasing here? I'm sorry? What percent of the atmosphere is CO2 that we're chasing here? Because you're talking about climate change. I, I don't know the percentage of atmospheric gases. You don't know the percent of the atmosphere. What I can tell CO2. you is that climate change is real. We got to do something about it. Yeah, this one's and called autumn, sir. So, I'm sorry. This one's called autumn right now. So, yeah. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't make out what you said, sir. This climate change right now is called autumn, yes. Yeah, that's, that's the seasons changing, which mm -hmm. respectively is not the same thing as the climate changing. And as somebody who is hoping to retire in the 2050s and who has kids who will be old enough to ask me as they're getting to their 30s, whether we did enough to deal with climate change or whether we just did what was convenient, I take that really seriously. Reclaiming my time. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. The trillions and trillions we're going to cost our kids to chase a tiny percentage of CO2 will bankrupt all of us and bankrupt our economy and ship it to China for all the other reasons. So I yield back, Mr. The gentleman's time has expired.